And for this reason, the African Union found it relevant to then be clear in its definition as to who is it that it will regard as what it would call the African diaspora. And the explanation, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I will not quote it verbatim, but it says quite simply that um, African diaspora constituted by all of those who have their point of origin traceable to the continent of Africa in the first instance. Secondly, that they would then have to express affinity and positive love for the continent. In other words, they have to have a sense of relationship and want of belonging with the continent, no matter how its condition may very well be today or tomorrow, yesterday. And thirdly, an important matter is that they also then must be proactive about their Africanness. In other words, they must be willing to work for the development of the continent. These three elements are the essential characteristics that define what it is that the AU has come to an agreement with, within itself to say that this constitutes an African diaspora. Now, this may not meet any, everybody's approval. That's hardly the issue. What's at issue is the fact that the African Union, in order not to self-indulge, in unending processes of definition about who's an African, it has cut the line in terms of who it is. Now that means, which then takes me to, your, to, to what I said is also a question of an individual identity issue. If when people understand who the African diaspora is, if when we tell them what are the noble intentions of us being able to come together and do things for ourselves, if when as a collective, they are being drawn to understanding how is it that we find the condition that collectively describes us in a negative as at the moment and they continue to self-negate and do not want to be regarded as, as, as Africans. Indeed, they would have excluded themselves. Now there's a limit and I want to use this uh, analogy. You see, when a horse, uh, the fastest horse that we have, runs and gallops and yet does not regard itself as a horse. It may regard itself as anything else but a horse. Perhaps those that are those of us who are riding it and having full benefit of understanding what it is must care, perhaps are obliged to care less about what the horse defines itself as, but what the horse is. You know? So those that want to continue to describe themselves as non-African, they may very well do so. The abject reality of our conditions is that Africans throughout the world, no matter how successful or not they are, are constantly reminded by the material conditions of their Africanness. Our next clip will be uh, an encounter with uh, Mr. Hollister, who is the president and CEO of Yara International of Norway, a company that distributes fertilizer in Africa. Um, he also and his company, they were at the summit discussing possible investment in Africa. So there are all the big NGOs uh, that are active, active in Africa, and also that we are working with a lot of other companies because uh, you're not only the need fertilizer, you need also seeds, you need equipment, you need also a very important you need the necessary infrastructure to be able to bring the, the products that the farmers are generating all uh, to the market. So it's a it's a whole food chain that you are involved in. But we are the starting point. So um, you help you supply the fertilizer and you also teach uh, the, uh, the how to also market their products. So we, we, our role is to supply the right fertilizer for the right products that they shall grow in the, in the soil that they do have. So we are supplying knowledge 
then very important part of it, so they can then use the right seed for the soil that they do have and the right fertilizer, making sure that they get the um, ultimate yield of it. Also then that it is done in an environmental friendly way. So we are then helping the farmers to generate more products and then we are also participating to other companies in generating the whole chain of uh, activities which is needed then to get the, the products and all the products from the farmers and into the market. And the market can be the next door uh, market but it can also be uh, the inter and the pan African market. Our next encounter was the uh, former president of Nigeria, uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo, who was also one of the speakers. He spoke on uh, the activities of the African Union and some of the investment opportunities across Africa, including Nigeria and resources that are available. It also has something that OE will never have. It had a program, a NEPAD, gave the program of the AU to achieve uh, or to drive the four pillars. Um, the NEPAD also had um, APRM, which was unique, so which was for African leaders to peer review themselves, to be able to say to themselves, this you have not done right. This you need to improve upon. It was unique and it has worked. Uh, so the, uh, at the beginning of this millennium, Africa decided that it would not be business as usual. It would be a new way and that new way they forged by themselves. But not only did they forge the new way by themselves, they got the support in Kananakis at the G8 meeting in Canada, um, in Kananakis. The G8 invited and accepted the uh, NEPAD and agreed to support it. And that was the beginning of the new progress that Africa started to make. On their own, they work out where they wanted to go and with the support of the international community and particularly uh, development partners started working. Our next encounter was with the um, Her Excellency, the Vice President of the Gambia, Dr. Aisatu Said. She um, talked about investment in Africa in general and various opportunities that are in Africa. Um, as I was listening to you, you were talking about investment in Africa. What do you think African leaders can do to attract investment into Africa? Provide the enabling environment. All that investors want is peace and stability, which is the precondition for any investor. What investors want is good business, profitable business, and it's there enough. So the heads of state or the leaders in Africa have to sell Africa well. But as I said, provide the enabling environment for business to operate. That is very critical. We talked about issues of corruption that has to be addressed. The issue of incentives, that's what businesses are looking for, has to be addressed. And of course, as I said, we have to identify the potential areas of investment and business in Africa. And in that way, investors can choose. Wherever they have comparative advantage, and we have it in our countries, they'll be there to invest with us. As I said, the environment has to be right. As I stated earlier, there were a lot of stakeholders at the summit. And one of those were 
was Mr. Julian Stern, the president of World Trade Center in Cape Town, South Africa. An exclusive objective of the World Trade Center Africa initiative is to develop trade with Africa. The main objective that we have there is to create at least 1% additional trade over the next 60 months uh, uh, with Africa. That alone, if we are successful in achieving that, that will bring more than three times the aid that Africa receives annually from the G8. And it will create 16% more revenue than Africa requires to alleviate poverty on the continent. So our 1% goal is quite a significant goal in terms of developing the African continent. Now, you say you are in 13 African countries? At this moment, yes. Yeah, could you name some of them? Uh, the whole East Africa region, which is basically Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, um, then coming down, Zambia, DRC, Mozambique, and so forth. Uh, you mentioned to me earlier that um, part of what your company does is that you link countries. And you gave me an example. Can you tell the audience what are yes. some of the links, that linkage that you've got? What is critically important is that Africa finds new market spaces, um, not just the traditional trading partners. Italy, for instance, is not a traditional trading partner with Africa. So there we are linking Italian companies that also need to find new market spaces for their products because their traditional markets are basically collapsing and have collapsed to a large degree. So what we do there is we're linking these highly experienced, high quality Italian companies with African partners for both import and export you have been watching this business segment of Africa Express. Remember, Africa is a growing market in terms of investment. There are so many countries in Africa with, uh, that has business opportunity. And Africa has a lot of tourist attraction. So, next time you're thinking of business investment and vacation, think of Africa. Thank you.